Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're a new uh, watcher to the channel, a well, warm welcome to you. And if you are returning, a nuclear warm welcome to you. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Press that like button um, if you like the uh, analysis. If you find the analysis I provide every week uh, useful. And um, and yeah, let's get into. I guess the uh, the week ahead um, from a fundamental perspective, the some news announcements and going to tradingeconomics.com in case uh, you don't know about this site, it is a treasure trove of uh, of information. But um, one of the things I'd like to look at is the week ahead. So um, coming up in the US, the FOMC minutes, personal consumption expenditure and Fed chair announcement will take the spotlight in the short end, uh, sorry, shortened Thanksgiving week, right? So happy Thanksgiving to all those uh, who are celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, so FOMC minutes is going to be uh, quite important. Flash PMIs for November will provide an update on the health of several economies, including the US, Japan and and the euro area germany and the uk so lots of uh, potential market moving news investors will also keep an eye a close eye on the coronavirus numbers as new lockdowns and restrictions were announced in europe and we'll get into that um, when we get to uh, the euro dollar so potentially a busy week as we head towards the end of um november right and uh let's get into now the uh the technicals and a bit more fundamental analysis so starting off as we always do on the dxy sorry i started from the pound dollar but dxy um is what we need to start off on and the dollar index is really just a measure of dollar strength against a basket of currencies like the uh, the um, the pound, the uh, euro, the yen, etc. And we keep an eye on the, the dollar index, the DXY, um, just uh, because we need to understand really kind of where dollar strength or weakness is potentially coming in. And um, at the moment, if we you know kind of go back at least maybe five years um, on the on the weekly chart, uh, we've got really nothing to the left of us in in terms of um, you know any kind of. Uh, you know, major supply zone, right? So um, at the moment, I was saying that this was really the path for least resistance was to the upside. And, um, you know, that's pretty much continued, right? So what we're looking at ultimately is, you know, pullbacks to any kind of major demand zone, that would be one. Um, and then looking for that as confluence with any kind of dollar uh, buy trades from a technical analysis perspective. But looking at the, uh, the fundamentals on the dollar, um, JP Morgan economists, now predicts Fed to raise rates in September. So uh, economists uh, led by Michael Faroli had seen the Fed on hold in 2022, but now Fed's full employment goal to be met mid 2022, says JP Morgan. So why is that important? If you're if the if the expectation is for the Federal Reserve to hike rates uh, to for rates to rise, then um, that should appreciate a currency. So in, in the medium to long term. Right. So, uh, again, just the um the first sense, um, paragraph of this is so JP Morgan Chase and Co uh, economists said that they now expect the US Federal Reserve to raise rates next September becoming the latest on Wall Street to jettison a forecast for the central bank to stay on hold through 2022 um so in a new outlook published um to clients late Wednesday to JP Morgan's this is up to date JP Morgan's US econ US economists led by Michael Ferroli said that by the middle of next year the central bank's goal of full employment will be satisfied so that's obviously a forecast it's not set in stone but that's what the uh, JP Morgan one of the biggest banks in the world are positioning themselves to do right so ultimately um you know not not just them many other banks are going to be taking note and doing their uh, analysis as well and so um you know the, the dollar for me ultimately is still a buy so any pullbacks on the dollar index um, and then we get maybe some bullish price action or well, for me anyway this is not financial advice I'll, I'll be looking at that as some sort of confluence um, to buy for example the dollar yen dollar Swiss um, trades that's my direction so uh, is, is long trades I'm not looking at supply at all I'm looking at shorting the dollar unless obviously something changes fundamentally or from a risk sentiment perspective but 
our overall um, my bias is to a long dollar and we've been long dollar uh, pretty much from for, for at least the second half of this year when the Federal Reserve kind of announced that they were hiking rates back in June so again uh, we've seen uh, the uh, the market make higher highs higher lows the moment buying the dollar right now isn't for me anyway on um isn't the greatest uh, i'd really want a bit of a pullback to come in and then look for buying opportunities around this 95 area um moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen again we've had a bit of a pullback in fact into this demand zone uh, we were saying this last week that um you know prices will probably go higher which they did um kind of broke this supply zone here and again just in case you're new um you really have to understand that um technical analysis um doesn't you know uh, carry any weight in 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 regards to um where prices may go meaning that if if the fundamentally you want to be a buyer right of a currency uh sometimes there's no supply zone that is going to stand in the way of that buying right Tr uh, traders are just looking for value and um and and where you know assessing the current value of a, of a currency and where they think it's going to go in the next three to six months and so um, that's the reason why you get you know supply zones for example that don't work right when you get a supply zone that you know breaks kind of breaks through or, or a demand zone for example if, if the uh, if the other way was to be true selling for example or, or a decline in value of that currency so um, as long as you can pick your direction based off of fundamentals and risk sentiment then you should be all right just wait for pullbacks to that you know to these zones potentially and again no one knows which zone is going to work but ultimately you should want to the prices should want to turn around at some point right um, and continue going higher so is that a bargain yes or no if it is then brilliant and your trade works out if it's not then just wait for um, a bit a bit deeper of a pullback and look for an even better bargain right we know this was a bargain why because it made higher highs and higher lows yeah this is definitely seen as a bargain price so uh, is will price if prices do come back to this, back down to this 113 area does that is that where you want to be a buyer and meet I do so um, and for other technical reasons as well I want to be a buyer the Japanese yen at the moment is um, in a risk-off environment does strengthen but I think um, uh, all the pretty much a lot of forecasts are pretty much um, to the upside uh, bank forecasts are looking at um, higher um, dollar yen exchange rates so let's see what happens also the dollar does uh, tend to typically do well and can do well in a risk-off environment also so let's see what what happens with all cylinders firing from a monetary policy perspective on the dollar again for me it's looking at short trades uh, from a long trade perspective again zooming out there's really nothing um we've kind of got this uh, this uh, supply zone i guess on the weekly time frame from uh, 2018 but again for me it's not really uh, something that i would kind of look into um, from a technical analysis perspective um, when looking at um, any kind of supply and again you want to you want to determine the reason why you want to get short right if if you're trying to get short based off a technical analysis um then uh be my guest but that's not a good enough reason for me to commit capital and risk what i'm risking based off of just um uh, technical analysis but uh but yeah to the upside is where my bias is uh dollar swiss again as i was saying uh you know the last week we did have a potential you know short trade of that supply zone but why would you want to get short here when really the path of this resistance is to the upside the swiss franc the swiss national bank is lagging way behind in monetary policy and this is the reason why you know you just can't just short at any supply or go long at any demand zone you must understand the fundamentals and fundamental analysis and monetary policy and um and the like so um again take out demand takes out that supply uh, for me now this is actually hidden demand right there so if price does pull back into this zone into this 92 area I think that's really going to be a nice zone for me to get look for any kind of long trade so pull back that's going to be like a decent bargain 
and then for me long trades zooming out a bit more um, is there a, you know a, a reason why you should possibly short here again potentially from a risk off perspective um, you know the, the, the Swiss franc can strengthen but against the dollar um, I'm not really too convinced on that one but uh, let's see what happens this week but I'm looking for pullbacks anyway um, if prices do go higher and make higher highs then it's okay I was waiting for a pullback into that demand zone so that's really how um, how I'm looking at this so uh, again my overall direction is long so we're uh, looking for long trades moving on to the uh, dollar cad uh, dollar cad one second Right, dollar CAD, uh, again, uh, you've got two central banks that are looking to hike rates um, at some point. And so this trade is a bit more of a difficult one. I was saying last week, um, I'm not really interested in this currency pair. I prefer pairs where you've got a clearer divergence between um, monetary policy. But there is an opportunity, of course, technically uh, to uh, get short here if you want to. Uh, for me, I'm um, not really too... Um, like I said, I'm not really trading this currency pair. Um, it's a bit harder to read. So if you do want to get short now is a is a short trade. If you want to get long, then the first demand zone will be uh, you know your buy. But um, for me, not really keen on this currency pair. Like I said, um, uh, it doesn't really interest me. But technically, I think those are some really nice zones. Moving on to the pound dollar, uh, pound dollar this trade idea for me now I think I do overall think that the dollar should want to strengthen over the pound um, but there are some um, pros and cons for buying the pound a bit of conflicting fundamental information and um, one of them is um, for example interest rates so uh, Bloomberg reports that markets look into February or look to February for the next turning point in Bank of England uh, rate bets so the Bank of England signaled the 0.5 percent is key threshold for bond buying plans traders bet um, bank rate will be below that level in three months but uh, traders are with traders wagering that a Bank of England rate hike in December is nearly a done deal they're turning their attention to February so the big question for traders is whether the Monetary Policy Committee raises borrowing costs to 0.5 you know and um, that is really the question are they going to be you know hiking rates from 0.1% um, to zero point five percent by uh, by February. Now, um, there's also some conflicting information from um, Bank of England's Hugh Pill, who cast doubt on the December rate hike. Right. So, chief economist notes uncertainties around strength of recovery, and investors anticipate a rate hike next month is almost certain. But uh, the Bank of England chief economist Hugh Pill cast doubt on the certainty of interest rate um, increase in December, noting the decision could would be definitely well, so be finally balanced and pointing out bumps in the economic recovery. Speaking uh, at an event in Bristol, Pill said there is no quick fix to bring inflation back to the two percent target, and that the central bank doesn't have the tools to uh, to fix supply chains that were upended by Brexit and the pandemic. So what he's kind of referring to is even though inflation is 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 high it's it's basically the inflation is being driven by supply chain so what happens when the supply chain gets fixed and it will you know hopefully eventually get fixed and, inv and inflation starts to come down that would basically mean that if they hike rates it might, it might have hiked rates a bit too soon right but the point being in this whole uh, situation between you know the Bank of England's uh, economist chief economist and also what the market's thinking is that um uh, there's some obviously come some conflicting signals there so um whether they're going to hike rates or not and um and so for me uh the pound is a bit of a um, um a difficult one to read and when currencies are a bit difficult the best thing to do is just to stay out right just stay out yeah and and don't trade don't take the trade so for me um i think there are uh, there are better trades to take um than the pound dollar although i do overall probably my, my best guess would be for a continued lower highs and lower lows but simply because i think the dollar um um is on is on the path of recovery a bit sooner so um even though the uh, the bank of england are hiking rates sooner i think um the the the, the 
the UK economy isn't necessarily doing as fantastic. It might be stagnating, even though there was some actually positive data recently around jobs. But let's see what happens. Um, for me, anyways, from a technical analysis perspective, if you do want to be a buyer, I think now's probably the time to look for that buying opportunity potentially on that dip. If you're looking for a sell trade, um, I'd probably say the higher end of this uh, demand zone, sorry, the supply zone here, I think where it has that kind of support and resistance confluence and uh, any kind of pullbacks into that area there, that, that is 1.36 would be a decent area to look for potential uh, short trades. Uh, moving on to the Euro dollar. Euro dollar for me is still a continued sell. We've been selling this um, currency and our, our bias anyway uh, for, 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 for a while and uh, just really waiting for some sort of pullback. And in fact, if I zoom in a little bit, there is actually a uh, hidden demand, sorry, hidden supply right there. Yep, hidden supply in that area. So that actually creates a nice zone potentially for any pullback there that would be nice between that uh, 1.145 uh, number. If prices can come up to there, then I, I think I might look for a potential short. Obviously, I've got to look for other confluences within that area. And if there are none, then it doesn't make the trade the best trade in the world. But um, I think that area is still a bit interesting. Let's see what happens. Ultimately, the best zone I think is going to be if prices can come up to this 115 uh, or 116 area I think that's going to be a very nice area that's my preferred area to look for any shorts but who knows for prices to move kind of from the 12 112s to the 116s would mean that it would have to move 400 pips and uh, I don't I can't see that happening um, you know within a week or so of course anything can happen but with um, with Europe fundamentally uh, going through uh, problems um, it's you know they're going through lockdowns, menacing in Europe. You know, test ECB stimulus wind down timeline. So Austria reimposes harsh restrictions, and Germany may follow suit in Euro area economy to take hit with decisions due to due on fate of QE. So um, I think the rumor was that um, the bank, um, the European Central Bank, were potentially looking to um, ease their QE. But now, how can they if um, potential lockdowns are going to affect the economy? The economy still needs to be potentially supported, right? So um, the return of lockdowns to stem Europe's latest wave of COVID-19 risks sapping the economy or the economic recovery and calling into question the timetable for the European Central Bank's wind down of emergency stimulus. And, in, and the wind down of the emergency stimulus would have been positive for the euro. But if they have to delay that, if they right have to do it maybe in 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 april rather than you know december or start it in april rather than december then obviously um the, the euro um currency is going to remain weak until that time so austria on friday became the first country beyond the continent's less vaccinated east to reimpose um widespread restrictions after curbs on people who haven't been jabbed fell to halt soaring infections you know parts of a german um parts of german or Germany also closed uh, non-essential businesses while the Netherlands has already ordered shops and bars to close early. So um, problems in Europe, and if there's problems in Europe still, especially around um, economic recovery, for me, the path of least resistance will continue to the downside, especially if the, if the euro, if the dollar is still the stronger of the two. So um, that's where we are. I think we just get rid of some of these, um, some of these zones up above. But um, yeah, direction for me is going to be to the downside. So any pullbacks this week for me are uh, buying opportunities or selling opportunities, I should say, uh, um, on this currency pair, but buying obviously for the dollar. Moving on to the Australian dollar, US dollar and um, uh, the Australian dollar, again, lagging behind monetary policy wise. And that's why you can see, uh, you know, that prices have been um making lower highs and lower lows. So any pullbacks, if you want to get short on this currency pair, um, are uh, uh, buying opportunities, I guess, for, for the US dollar. Um, but I do think that if prices do come down to this uh, 71 area, technically, that is a fantastic zone. This is quite nice as well. This 72 round number is, is really nice as well. But I do think the bottom of this range is going to be really nice technically for a potential buy. But um, Let's see what happens there, if prices can reach down there. And let's look for gold. Gold, um, again, um, inflation concerns, 
um, you know, being a worry, although the dollar is strengthening, uh, there are risks, global risk sentiment, um, uh, risk off sentiment still building as well, which is the reason why gold is making higher highs. So, um, you know, inflation, you know, is, is suddenly on everyone's mind. So how bad will it be? Right. And um, uh, inflation, uh, gold is a hedge against inflation. So as, if, as inflation rises, uh, gold should want to rise too. Hence the reason why you're seeing gold make those higher highs, higher lows. Also as well, gold will get back to $2,000 is the prediction in the next few months, says Duggan. Uh, and Gary Duggan is the chief executive officer at Global CIO Office. So um, he's talking about the uh, uh, gold going to potentially 2000. So if they can't, if the, if the Federal Reserve can't get inflation to come down, uh, 2000 is the target right up here. So where are we now at the 1845s? So it's again, if you're looking at that as your target, look for buying opportunities, potentially the nearest buying opportunity from a demand zone perspective is going to be if prices come down to the 1781 area before looking at buying, or if prices make higher highs and then it becomes a, a demand zone here, and then you're looking for buy trades there. So that's pretty much the direction at the moment. Um, if you uh, are, you know, basically playing against the dollar and if you are looking for potential short trades, if everything, if inflation starts to come down or, you know, um, uh, the risks, risk sentiment starts to wane a little bit, then I think buying or, or getting short, I should say, on the on gold um, at this 80, uh, 1890 area, is going to be a decent zone to look for any kind of short trades. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Um, take care. Hope you have a great trading week and uh, speak to you all soon.